Good morning, guys. Did you grab your favorite beverage? This girl is on fire this morning. What does it take to move mountains? We talked about this the other day. Matthew 17, 20. It even says it on my t-shirt. But get it. By prayer and fasting, that is how you move mountains. Mm -hmm. With the faith of merely a mustard seed, you can move mountains with God's word. The title of today's message is Blessings and Curses. You want blessings? You want blessings? Bless others. Definitely if you curse people, <laughs> that's going to come back on you. The Bible says uh, you reap what you sow. I know that the the word out there in, in the this other movement, whatever it is, um, is uh, karma. But uh, the Bible says that the Bible says you reap what you sow. So go sow a good seed, guys. And you want to have faith as little as a mustard seed even. You want to move mountains. Matthew 17, 20 and Matthew 17, 21 says by prayer and fasting. I don't know why I can't get that right. Um, man, you know, I made the mistake of this morning reading on Facebook, right? <sighs> Even after praying up in the spirit, uh, I read, I read my Facebook newsfeed and I read some disturbing news. I, I read a headline. I didn't go in and read the actual article. I, I don't take the time to do that in the morning. I'm praying and I'm, I'm building my faith up, right? To come into this room and help you enter in to God's presence. But, um, reading this morning that uh, some kid wore a t-shirt that said faith over fear and he was asked to turn that t-shirt around well I'm here to tell you that fear is a liar the author of confusion is Satan and he is a liar he wants you to believe that that you should fear fear over faith and that is just not true that is simply not true faith over fear guys that's it for today <laughs> no, not really. Oh. Good morning to you. It's great to see you here this morning. What a great day here on the central coast of California. Um, we're just uh, on fire here for Jesus, and there's going to be a worship gathering. Some nice uh, God-fearing young men are holding a worship praise event. Um, they call it a protest I call it a praise event. It's um, they are protesting you know, fear and etc. But um, they're going to meet at Pismo in Pismo Beach on Saturday, August eighth, which is coming up in just a few days. And uh, good morning, Steve. That's at four p.m. this Saturday. Good morning, Steve Hillstein's in the house. He's the drummer. He is my my um, co-conspirator. <laughs> good job. Good job working with me in the ministry. This is really, um, this is this is a good thing, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, uh, we're gonna start out here by praying this morning. We're gonna pray and build our faith, uh, just just through prayer. And um, yeah, Heavenly Father, we usher in your Spirit, Lord, your great and almighty self, you are welcome here among these people. We are, we are God chasers. We desire more of you, and that's why we're here this morning. Father God, we welcome you. We exalt you. We give all glory. We give all honor and all praise to you, Jesus, God the Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence here. Thank you that you are omnipotent. You are all-knowing. You are all places at all times. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -mm. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Place a blood of the Lamb, shield of protection around us, 20,000 feet above, below, and around us, and let nothing but your love 
penetrate that blood of the Lamb, shield of protection, in the name of Jesus Christ. Place that same blood of the Lamb, shield of protection, 20,000 feet above, below, and around every single dwelling place, right? Every place we lay our head, every place of work, workplace, every single mode of transportation, your protection, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Place on us the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt buckle of truth. Shod our feet with the preparation of the peace, the gospel of peace of Jesus Christ. Place in our hand the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, sharper than any double-edged sword. Place in our other hand the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Lead us not into temptation, O God, but deliver us from evil, for thine is thy kingdom and the power and the glory. Lord, you're so amazing. I love when your Holy Spirit just showers us, Lord, when we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Yes, Lord. I'm going to brag on my kids for a minute. One one good thing that I, I saw this morning on Facebook was my my beautiful daughter-in-law, who's so talented, she she was out taking more pictures of Abigail, my youngest daughter, and the pictures were just, the, the one picture I actually saw, she posted one picture of Abigail on the beach, and the, the sand was wavy in the background, and Abigail had on this black lace with uh, these sleeves that, you know, those, those one bat wings with sleeves that hang down? It was just like, wow, I mean, what a creative piece of artwork. I'm just amazed at my kids. Justin, uh, he's like a walking sports almanac. He was a history major. He's just, he's so fantastically brilliant and uh, brilliant in the computer. He's he's big gamer and he's very, very, very intelligent. I'm so proud of Justin. Alex uh, builds anything. He remodeled his home. Uh, he, he really literally uh, bought the house, tore it down to a wall, and rebuilt it, and it's absolutely stunning. He's going to make about 100, hundo, you know, 100 grand on the, um, uh, he's got about 100,000 100, in equity in a very short amount of time. Alex is just a master builder, uh, and he's actually a pipe fitter by trade. He's brilliant. Melissa, his wife, is a photographer, and like I just said, she's, she's, um, She's very gifted, and she was taking pictures of Abigail again, who's a, a stunning, a stunning um, subject. But they're just going off in the photography uh, field there, and, and Abigail is, is amazing in the makeup artistry. She's a true artist in her field, and Jessica, she's an artist in the garden. She's an organic gardener. If you're not following her, Jessie's Farm, Jessie's underscore farm is, is my little gardener girl. My kids, I'm just bragging on my children, right? We want to talk about positive things and, and things. Um, we just want to build each other up. And this morning, I just wanted to build up my adult children. They're, uh, they range in age from 20 to 30. They're going all going on the next age. And I'm so proud of all of you, the kind humans that you are. You're kind and your goodness is amazing how you help other people and uh, you you esteem others as higher than yourself. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. Justin, Alex, Melissa, Jessica, and Abigail. So proud of you. Yeah. Okay. We're going to start with some end time prophecy. Uh, that is in the in the book of Daniel. Daniel's in the Old Testament. We're going to go into Daniel. Malachi is the last one. Let's see where it's Daniel is uh, in the names right here. Hosea, just before Hosea. We're going to go to the last verse in Daniel for some end time prophecy. I just want to say that uh, prophecy of the end time. Daniel uh, chapter 12. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Key words, your people. 
everyone who is found written in the book, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, firmament and those who turn away to righteousness, and those who turn many to righteousness, like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shun up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there stood two others, one on this river bank and the other on that river bank. And one said to the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, How long shall the fulfillment of these wonders be? Then I heard the man clothed in linen, who was above the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand to heaven, and swore by him who lives forever, God the Father, that it shall be for a time, times and half a time, and when the power of the holy people has been completely shattered, all these things shall be finished. Dear Lord, although I heard, I did not understand. Then I said, My Lord, what shall be the end of these things? And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the end of the till the time of the end. Many shall be purified, made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away, and the abomination of desolation is set up, there shall be one thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. But you go your way till the end, for you shall rest and will arise to your inheritance at the end of the days. That was reading in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just I pray, God, that you would direct me in the way I should go this morning with the message. I also woke up to another another article this morning. See, this is why I don't do uh, the Facebook before I, well, I started praying, but before I give the message, I, I should not do Facebook. I should not do it. <laughs> um, but no, maybe I should. This is good. This is really good. We're going to go to Genesis 12. Whoa, the first book in the Bible. Let's turn to Genesis 12. We're a little bit all over the place this morning. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit is leading me and guiding me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your divine presence here. You are good God. Good, good, good. Genesis 12, 2 to 3. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is God referring to Israel. It says here, this is a promise to Abram. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Okay, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. Only, only a nation sustained by God could withstand what Israel has withstood. Only, only Israel, right? Guys, I read an article this morning that was blessing it, uh, blessing, cursing rather, not blessing Israel. And I just say, the Bible says, it's not me. Bless Israel, you will be blessed. Curse Israel, you will be cursed. Honestly, uh, I, I'm wearing the Star of David this morning, and that is because my heritage, uh, part of my family are, are Jews. They are uh, the, from the Katz family, K-A-T-Z. And our line of cats comes directly from uh, the line of Aaron, the brother of Moses. And um, he was the first high priest. And there is much more 
information out there about it, but my mother did the research and um, I'm proud of my Jewish heritage and I love my, my Jewish family. I've got, um, there's Lisa um, Zamora. Lisa is still in, she was a Tinsky, Lisa Atinsky. She is my cousin's cousin and she is in Israel living there. Uh, she went to school there. Um, and um, Brian Atinsky is living in Milwaukee, but my, my cousins, the Katz family, are all spread out and um, I just love my Jewish family, my Jewish heritage, and I pray for my Jewish family. And um, this is a reminder, wearing my mother's old Star of David that she passed along to me, is just a reminder to, to pray for them. And I bless, I bless Israel, and Israel is the apple of God's eye, and, and Israel was no random act of God. Amen? Amen. Okay, so... Now, I want to read in James. We're going to read James today. James, James, James. Go to the New Testament, and we are going to read in James. It's between Hebrews and 1 Peter, I believe. And I always skip over it because it's small. We're going to read in James. Okay, we're actually going to go back to the Psalms too this morning, but we're going to start out in James. Guys, we want to have faith over fear, right? Let's put our trust and hope in the Lord and we are going to believe by faith, Lord, that you're going to give us wisdom and knowledge through reading your word and we're going to stand in faith and by faith, we're going to acknowledge the power of your Holy Spirit to give us understanding of the word. Good morning, everyone. It's great to have you here this morning. Welcome to our prayer room. James, chapter 1. James, a bondservant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Ah, do you know about the about Aliyah? It is the returning of the Jews to Israel. God has literally scattered Jews in around China, Ethiopia, America, all over the world. And there is an actual movement called Aliyah, and it is all about the Jews returning to Israel. Analita, good morning. I've been thinking about you. Good morning. I want to know how things turned out for you um, with, in Canada. So um, message me. I'd love to get an update from you, Analita. Beautiful singer, joyous in the word. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded, he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Thank you, Analita. Okay, good. Good. She's going to give me an update. That's fantastic. <laughs> let the lowly brother glory in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation because as a flower of the field he will pass away for no sooner has the sun risen with a burning heat than it withers the grass its flower falls its and its beautiful appearance perishes so the rich man also will fade away in his pursuits blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the lord has promised to love uh, to those who love him let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is, gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of, of turning. Of his own 
will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. God is long-suffering. Amen. One of the fruits of the Spirit. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. God is the word, and the word is God. John chapter 1. And it says here in the word, is able to save your soul. The word of God is able, able to save your soul. But be doers of the word, amen, and not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. Kind of like labor, right? <laughs> it's like women, we have... We go through labor. Four times I've gone through labor. The natural way. And we forget. <laughs> but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. My brethren, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with partiality. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings in fine apparel, and there should also come in a poor man in filthy clothes, and you have paid and you Pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, You sit here in a good place. And say to the poor man, You stand there or sit here at my footstool. Have you not sown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? We're going to skip over here. We're going to skip over here. Not, not that, not that um, I don't love all of the word. We love all of the word. But there are some other key points that I want to say. And that is James 2 chapter 21 was not abraham our father justified by works when he offered isaac his son on the altar do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled saying abraham believed god and it was accounted to him for righteousness 26 for as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also Oh man, I saw some things on Facebook this morning that I was like, I still can't get over it. I'm a little bit shocked by some of the things I read. Uh, but um, James 3, James chapter 3, verse 8. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father. And with it we curse men who have been made in the... In the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. <laughs> Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. But my goodness, out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. I'm just going to confess right there. Sometimes I say cuss words and it's really, um, it really troubles me. <laughs> and I catch myself doing it and I really, I really try to confess immediately and just say, I'm, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, Lord. <sighs> James 3, verse 17. But the wisdom is that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Guys, we want to be peacemakers. Lord, that's our prayer this morning. 
Father God, that we would be peacemakers, that we would sow peace in these times of troubles, in these stormies, Lord, that I call them stormies, that, Lord, the nations are raging, Father God, that we would go and sow peace today. In Jesus' name. James chapter 5, 15. <laughs> And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another, that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I always say, Lord, how much more effective are the prayers of a mother? Yes, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, that our our mothers are praying for us. My mother, my mother prayed for me. My grandmother prayed us all into the kingdom. My, my grandmother was Mary McKillop, an Irish Catholic, and she prayed all of us, including her husband, my grandfather, Joseph Katz, uh, the Jew. She prayed him into the kingdom. Amen. And she prayed us all into the kingdom. And um, she prayed that, that uh, prayer of the Catholic prayer and thy kingdom come thy will be done she always prayed that prayer thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us my my grandmother prayed that prayer and she prayed us all into the kingdom and God is good amen Thank you, Lord, for your presence here this morning. Now we're going to go to the Psalms. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. We exalt you. We worship you. Father, we're, we're in troubled times, and many of us are so anxious. We have anxiety, and um, it kind of rules our world. So I'm going to pray peace over each and every one of you this morning. The peace that surpasses all understanding would guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Lord, that anxiety would have no hold on your people this morning, Father God. No hold. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go to the end of Psalms, and we're going to praise the Lord. Praise, praise, praise. Praise the Lord God Almighty. Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to God. For it is pleasant, and praise is beautiful. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. That's Aliyah, what I was talking about. Wow. Wow. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted. Thank you, Lord, for revelation this morning. And binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. Make note of that. Aliyah. Huh. And binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked down to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises on the harp to our God who covers the heavens with clouds, who prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass to grow on the mountains. He gives to the beast its food and to the young ravens that cry. He does not delight in the strength of the horse. He takes no pleasure in the legs of man. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He makes peace in your borders and fills you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters the frost like ashes. He casts out his hail like morsels. Good morning, George Febish. It's good to have you in the house this morning. This is what God does. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters the frost like ashes. 
He cast out his hail like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He causes his wind to blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statues, and his judgments to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're in Psalm 148 now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures in all the depths. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children. I'm hearing a song in that. Amen. I'm going to write a song. Praise the Lord. Let the praise of the name let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He And he has exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel. O people near to him, praise the Lord. The last psalm in the Bible. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, and his praise in the assembly of saints. Let Israel Rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with the dance. Michael, it's good to have you here this morning. Welcome. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Amen. Amen. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. That's this, guys. <laughs> Not the first time that uh, the Bible is referred to as a two-edged sword. Back there in Ephesians, in chapter 6, it is as well. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all the saints praise the Lord. Oh, 150 is the last psalm. I'm sorry about that. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of trumpets. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let every breath that has breath praise the Lord. Let every breath praise you, Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Saints, we're not going to stop praising the Lord. We're not going to stop believing by faith that he is in control, that he has this. The nations are raising and raging, and through it all, we will continue to praise God. We will continue to worship him, to sing him sweet praises. The church, the church is rising, right? The church is rising, and we are standing on solid ground, a solid rock. And he is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God gave his only begotten Son that whoever will believe in him, will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. That's found in John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Go to jo uh, John chapter 3, because I want to show you something. It's interesting how sometimes we read the things that... Where am I? We read what we want to read. Uh -huh in the word we we read what gives us a good feeling amen sometimes the truth hurts you know <laughs> the truth does hurt actually ouch <laughs> J 
John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world may, through him, might be saved. Right? And John 3, 26. 36 says this he who believes in the son has everlasting life and he who does not believe the son shall not see life but the wrath of god abides on him heavenly father thank you for showing this to us once again father god thank you so much for your loving kindness thank you lord that you are love you yourself is the very essence of god is love Guys, in this room, the reoccurring theme will always be God is love. He is a loving, kind, long-suffering, heavenly daddy to those who believe. Love never fails, 1 Corinthians 13, 8. And his word will never return void, Isaiah 55, 11. There are so many scriptures that I repeat over and over and over again because I want you to know them. God wants you to know him in the way to the truth. The way, the truth, and the life is, is through Jesus Christ, God's Son. And to know God, to know him, is the key in this faithful life. I was talking with someone yesterday who reads the Bible every day. She reads the Bible every single day. And I don't know how for how many years this woman has been reading the Bible. Um, she's in her 90s and she's been reading the Bible literally uh, for days and days and days on end and um, it just grieved my heart it really really grieved my heart when she said she she just doesn't didn't understand who God is and and um, what he stands for, what who God is, he himself, and and um, God, that you would give us that revelation, this revelation of who you are, the very essence of you, which is light, it is life, and it is love. God, in your word, you describe your characteristics. You teach us about your ways, even though we, we have no way <laughs> of knowing your thoughts. Your thoughts are way, way above ours. Oh God, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That we would know you more, God, Jesus. That we would hunger for your word. That we would thirst for your spirit. That we would desire more of you. Lord, if we're not, if we're not reading your word, we're not, we're not truly knowing you and knowing your characteristics and knowing the very essence of you. If we're not praying, we're not talking to you we're not knowing you we're not knowing and having relationship with you if we're not listening to you and what you have to say to us i pray oh god that you would teach us how to listen to you teach us how to hear from you teach us how to seek you and to know you more lord that is through reading your word and through prayer thank you lord that the Fervent, effective prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Thank you for your word, O God. You are faithful. You are true. You are everlasting. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. I would love to introduce you to him. If you would like to commit your life to Jesus, if you would like to acknowledge that you are a sinner and that you fall short and that you desperately need God today, pray this prayer with me. Lord, I pray, I pray to you to get to know you. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I fall short. I am no, practically no good is in me, Lord, but you are good and you are the goodness that, um, that can come in to my heart and change me you can renew a right spirit within me oh god you will do this you will renew a right spirit within me lord as i acknowledge 
that I am a sinner and I acknowledge and I believe that Jesus Christ, you are the Son of God and that you are the only way to the Father. I acknowledge you and I believe you, Lord, right now. I believe that you are my Father, my Heavenly Father, my Heavenly Daddy, and that I can call on you now, that I can call on you now to save me and come into my life and change me in Jesus name. We're going to do a baptism. We're going to have a baptism and that's for anyone who would like to take this take the um commitment of walking with the Lord a step further even and be baptized by water. Pastor Brad Elford, uh Brad Elijah, Apostle Apostle Brad from New Day Church and Final Note Ministries. Uh, will be leading us up on August 15th on a Saturday around 6 p.m. at Grover Beach on the Central Coast of California. If you want to be baptized, reach out to me, Michelle at moralsupport.com or reach out to, to Pastor Brad at Final Note Ministries or New Day Church in Paso Robles, California. There'll be more information to come about the baptism. You guys have a great day. God bless you and love you and keep you in all your ways. I love you too. See you tomorrow.